obviously more pleased with this result than the last two games um, and uh, really proud of our resilience just just trying to continue to stay in it fight back find a way that was the, the real positive tonight and you know we've lost the last two games by one possession and guys had chances to make plays to win it plays that you know you can expect to convert whether it's free throws or layups or that type of thing and as I told you guys after those games that's not the reason you lose the game but you know the toll that takes on on those guys and on a team when you keep you know you lose a couple in a row that you felt you could have won by just converting you know a reasonable play that you can expect to convert and so tonight when Dan misses the two free throws you know I think it's kind of one of those things you're going oh my gosh no way you know I, you can feel that from the team and to just find a way to get to overtime and then find a way. That's the kind of resilience that you're really proud of as a coach and something we can really build on moving forward. So um, proud of that. I, I, guys, I thought John Newman was just incredible tonight on both ends. You know, I, I think at the end of regulation one time, I subbed him out offense, defense, and I'm going, what the heck am I doing? I mean, he was great on offense. And then he made so many defensive plays. How about the play where he steals it on the right sideline? I mean. Uh, from Miller, I mean, he was he was terrific. Uh, and then to see him step up and make big free throws, I thought that was really cool too. And I thought Day Day, you know, had his best game in league play. I thought he looked confident, aggressive. Uh, he was he's continuing to grow defensively. Um, so I was I was pleased with with those two, um, you know. And then it wasn't Vic's night, you know, like you, you, we're struggling to find him and get him in the ring. They, they did a nice job. They switched him early and made it difficult. Uh, but, boy, the three hits was just a massive three. And we talked about it as we had a chance to huddle over there while they were checking the monitor. So, you know, I, think I could keep going down the, the line, but, uh, you know, I thought John Newman was just terrific. And so uh, it was good to see Aziz back there. He practiced live for the first time yesterday and said he felt great. And I was a little worried if we – played him too much, especially as the game got going on, but he was so effective. I mean, you look, he's plus 12. I mean, the impact he has on the game and on our team is tremendous. Um, and he said he felt pretty good after the game. So that's, that's a good sign moving forward. But it was good to see him back out there. They score 26 points in seven minutes right out of the gate. You have to use two timeouts. How impressed are you with the way your team responded? I think they scored five over the next – Eight, two, you know, two, four minute segments. Well, I was really unimpressed with the way we sure. started the game. You know, I, like, I, quite frankly, I was pissed, I, and I didn't expect that. This team, this team's been pretty consistent with like effort and energy, and I didn't think we had very good effort or energy to start the game, and I was really disappointed. That that surprised me. Uh, but then, as I said, the thing I was proud of tonight was how we responded to things, and we responded quickly. And I thought that Jizzle. Um, Josh and AZ came off the bench and just ignited us a little bit. I thought they gave us some energy early, and that kind of got us going a little bit again. Um, and then I thought our guys, for the rest of the night, had good effort and energy. But that, that first, however, what was it, six, seven, eight minutes? I mean, that was, boy, that was, that was disappointing. Uh, and we, we kind of spotted ourselves, or spotted them some, some easy baskets, and we're trying to kind of dig out of it the whole first half. How would you characterize, Wes, the final five seconds of regulation? <laughs> and then how you guys handled, carried the momentum in overtime? Man, I tell you what, the uh, that was wild. That was a wild sequence. I mean, it really was. Like, I, that's up there. I, you know, you coach a long time. You've been through some wild sequences, and that's just coaching. That's basketball. But that that's that's on the list. I mean, that was insane, just the swings. Um you know, I, that was wild. I, a lot of missed free throws in there, three of them to be exact, that could have won the game for either team. John called his two mates at the free throw line a full circle moment. He talked about how down he was after the Texas game. What were your conversations like with him through the past week, and what, what was it like to see him hit those two free throws and help get you guys the lead? He took it incredibly hard. And I knew he would. I mean, I think I said that to you guys while I was in here. And I, that, that comes from somebody as a player and, and trying to grow as a coach, an adult that does that same type of thing to myself. So I, 
I, uh, I, I respect John because his care is so high. You know, like, I, like I can relate to that. But he's also a leader on our team. And he, it's like this is what I've learned about being a coach. We don't, we don't, we, we take losses incredibly hard, guys. I, I mean, I, I, somebody said something in a press conference the other day. But I, you guys see Patino's press conference? I mean, I like every coach relates to that because it was just brutally honest. And you're like, yep, I feel the same way. But as a, as a coach in a leadership position, we don't get to dwell because we have a responsibility to the guys in the locker room to respond the right way and prepare for the next game and and lead them. We don't get to dwell. And that was one of the things John and I talked about. It's like I I relate and understand and appreciate how much you care and why you're taking it so hard, but you don't you don't get to dwell cuz you're a leader on our team and you have to show them how to deal with it. And it, he didn't turn the corner as quick as I wanted, but by the time we got into the Baylor game, I thought he had the right approach and I thought that helped our team after the Baylor game when Dan misses you know, a layup and CMOS misses a three and they're really down. I thought it helped. They've all kind of been through it together a little bit now and that's how the team starts coming together. So I, he took it really hard, but it was great to see him kind of back looking confident, get back to that moment on the free throw line and make two big ones. How do your emotions run with, with Day Day? He'll bang a bunch of layups, then he'll turn around and make super clutch shots, big rebound. You know, he's, he's a good reason to get to overtime. I mean, Coaching's a wacky profession, and he gets the, the steal and the run-out layup and tries to get his feet set to go dunk it. I've calmed down a lot in my old age. You know? I mean, I, it's not even funny to me. I mean, it's like, come on. You know, like, but that's coaching, you know, and he's a – we got two rookie point guards. They're rookies. I just what it is. They're, they want it – they're about – they are about everything – that Cincinnati Bearcats are about. Like, they, they represent what this program has been about for a long time. They're the right kind of kids, but they're rookies. And they're, they're learning what this takes at this, the best league in college basketball. And my job isn't to freak out and yell and scream at him for missing. He knows he missed a damn layup, a big one. I think with the four-point game when he did, late in the, in the regulation. My, my job is to to keep helping them learn and grow and get them ready to play the next play. They don't he doesn't need me to tell him that he screwed it up there. He knows, okay? Um, so yeah, it's a, that's the kind of roller coaster that coaches live on, but we got to get to a point we don't smoke layups, okay? We we saw way too many of that the last, you know, couple games. You uh, you talked after the Texas game about John maybe being fatigued at the end because you had to use him almost all 40 minutes. How much has it meant for this team for Josh? I thought gave great minutes on Emmanuel Miller, you know, when you when you called on him, to be able to kind of give you a second defensive guy on the wing that you can use. I, I think uh, I'm, I'm actually glad you asked the question. Well, he, he has been um, – he's been a key to us improving as a defensive team. There were not – there were – I don't know if we look like an improved defensive team tonight, but during stretches. But he's been a massive key. He's one of our best defensive players. And to have somebody else other than John that you, you not just you know can play defense, but you can rely on every day. And Josh has become a guy that's a great defensive player that's reliable and consistent every day. It's really added to our to our team in an incredible positive way, and probably something that doesn't get enough attention and should. So, yeah, I've been really pleased with Josh. Coach, you've had a different player lead the team in scoring in all four conference games. Do you guys as a staff feel like that can kind of be a strength <laughs> when opposing teams are scouting you, that they can't key in on one guy to kind of slow down? They have to slow down the entire machine of the Bearcat offense? I think, you know, when it comes to, to our, our offense and guys' performances, I, I think guys, like, we, we don't have a team full of, you know, fourth and fifth year seniors you know, like we, we got some younger players or players that maybe are older but in new positions. And they're talented. They're gifted. Like we have a nice roster, but they're learning their way. And, you, you're, you know, you're starting to see that. Like, you, you know, you see Dan Skilling starting to show what he's capable of offensively the last couple games, you know, at this level, right? Or, you know, you see CMOS and what he's capable of, you know. But these guys are at this level for the first time. 
finding their way for the first time, as we continue to work through it and they become more consistent, we're going to become a very good offensive team because we have a lot of offensive depth and ability. Ryan last one. Coach, coming off back-to-back, -back, one possession losses, what does a win like tonight do for your team's confidence moving forward? Yeah, you know, like it, it's uh, – it's it's important when you've lost a couple games that you felt you had real chances to win. Uh, it's important to win one. You got to learn how to win in one two possession games, which it seems like this whole dang league is, right? And so that that it was important. If we didn't win tonight, we'd be back at work. We'd be down, but we'd be back at work trying to figure out how to do it again, and we'd eventually do it. But it was nice that it came through tonight, and that should give our team some confidence. All right, thanks, coach. Thanks, coach.